Hi everybody, this is Kerry and Cody of Jawwiz Bushcraft, and I'm here today to talk to you about my first aid kit. Uh, first off, let me start off by saying that I am not a medic. Uh, I don't work in the medical world in any sort. And uh, all I'm doing today is showing you what I carry into the woods. Um, I will, however, say that I think everybody needs to carry their own first aid kit for going in the woods. Uh, and you should know how to use what's in your first aid kit. Uh, don't carry stuff you don't know how to use. And, uh, but that's not an excuse to not carry a first aid kit. You need to get one, build one, learn about it, make yourself smart in this situation because being out away from civilization and having a medical emergency and not knowing what to do would really suck. I can't imagine being a whole lot worse scenarios than that. Uh, but first I'm just going to show you this here is uh, it's an old shaving kit care package USO doohickey that I got on one of my rotations overseas. Um, I brought it home, it seemed like a good bag. Being a bushcrafter, I, I find uses in just about everything. And uh, that right there was about near perfect for, uh, for a small first aid kit for, for uh, doing my woods bumming. Uh, within my first aid kit, I'll start off by talking about a pressure bandage. I carry a pressure bandage. Um, what that means, a pressure bandage is a bandage designed to hold pressure on an area, um, you know, a pretty severe cut, uh, puncture wound, whatever. Uh, say, scenario is, I'm out here and I'm chopping, you know, with my axe. I uh, missed a piece of wood, I'm doing it wrong, whatever, axe goes into my leg. Well, that's a pretty nasty, severe cut. It's probably going to be a big bleeder. Uh, that's where a pressure bandage would, would probably come in handy. And all a pressure bandage is, is this big, it's, uh, it's sterile when it's, when it's in the package, but it's a big bandage with uh, two tails on each end made to tie around um, the limb or whatever for the wound. And uh, a lot of the stuff you're, you're going to see here is, is surplus gear, and I get that everybody cannot get surplus gear. I know that. Um, however, all this is is uh, <laughs> a, a pad, you know, like the woman's needs pads, the kind with wings, whatever. That's all this is. Um, so if you get one of those and you get, you know, a piece of cloth, bandana, or whatever to make a, a tail to tie around, you have something just as good as this military issue pressure bandage. Uh, maybe even better. Uh, next, I always carry a cravat. Uh, all this is is a triangular piece of cloth. Um, once again, a bandana if you can't get one. But uh, these can supplement pressure bandages. This is what it looks like out of the package, by the way. This is a, uh, you know, this can supplement pressure bandages. Uh, work on its own to be a sling. You can turn and make a tourniquet out of it. Um, those things are virtually limitless when it comes to its uses. Uh, and I recommend carrying one. Um, if you can't get a cravat, uh, a bandana will work the same way. A big piece of cloth cut into a triangle. Bam, you've got a cravat. Uh, next. I always carry, this is new skin, uh, this is the stuff, uh, it's, it's a liquid bandage, uh, that stuff is great, I have cut myself so bad that I needed stitches, didn't go get stitches, <laughs> just put this stuff on, not saying it was the smartest move I ever made, uh, but I'm saying it worked. Um, next I have this, uh, you might recognize these as uh, what an EMT personnel or something like that would carry to uh, wrap around your arm and giving you an IV, drawn blood or whatever. Uh, I use it kind of like a kind of like a tourniquet. I have tourniquets. I can make tourniquets, but I already had this and it's pretty little, so I threw it in my pack. Um, what that's for is I do do that scenario where I hit myself in the leg with my axe. I can wrap that around my leg, tighten it down, help stop the bleeding. Um, next, these are. Um, water purification tablets not really a first aid uh, deal but uh, it will keep you from getting sick so therefore it stays in my first aid kit uh, I keep uh, a baggie of Motrin uh, you can keep Advil, Ibuprofen, Tylenol, whatever, some sort of painkiller I always have some sort of painkiller when I'm out here uh, another good thing that I don't have out here is some sort of uh, like Imodium uh, Pepto-Bismol something like that to kind of help uh, if you get stomach problems I don't have any out here. Um, I probably should. Whatever. Bad on me. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, next, I have antiseptic ointment. And, uh, you know, 
I get a small nick, small scratch, something like that. I could put this on to help keep her from getting infected and uh, to help healing it. Um, along with it, I keep uh, you know an assortment of band aids. Just nothing special, just regular old band aids. I have quite a few of them in my in my kit. Uh, next, I have petroleum gauze. Um, I do have a a more serious wound, something like that, where I need a gauze or something like that to help uh, you know kind of cover up, stop the bleeding. This stuff right here is going to be a lot more sterile. Uh, than just your regular gauze and it's going to help keep you from getting infected and things like that. Uh, besides the petroleum gauze, I keep a regular, this is compressed gauze, I pop this open and it's just going to be normal big stack of gauze pads. Uh, next, I keep a, a first aid eye kit, uh, eye dressing. If I am running through the woods and I get slammed in the face by a branch, hits me in the eye, um, that right there will help. Uh, you probably could just wear iPro and uh, call it a day, but uh, you know who wants to wear iPro 24/7 while wandering around the woods? If you do, you do. If you don't, I'd recommend finding some sort of eye care kit just in case. Uh, always have some, you know, medical tape along with this is uh, just an ace bandage, a smaller ace bandage. You can get bigger ones. Uh, this is all I have in mind for now. Um, after that, I always carry medical gloves. If I'm out with uh, a buddy, um, you know, group of people, someone gets hurt, and I've got to go in and, uh, you know, help them out. I want to protect myself as well as protect them. You know, uh, I may be out there with a buddy who's got some sort of blood, you know, disease that's, that's passed through the blood, and I don't know about it. I'd hate to find out the hard way by getting that disease. So just to be safe, I carry these. Uh, it also works if, uh, you know, um, cleaning game, something like that. Kind of help uh, keep the gunk from from getting into you and keep, uh, and also to protect the patient. You're not going to worry about the game, I guess. Protect the patient from whatever you may have. If I've got cuts, scrapes in my hands, and I'm out there and I'm, you know, helping somebody who's got a massive bleeder, you know, I don't want whatever I may have getting into them or whatever they may have getting into me. So having, you know, surgical gloves is always a good idea in my book. Uh, last, and one of the more important things, is a space blanket. Uh, this space blanket will help keep your patient from going into shock, uh, protect them from going into hypothermia, um, as well as it's just a great thing to have, you know, even when it's not a medical uh, emergency, emergency situation. But uh, this is my first aid kit. Uh, it's obviously not like a super first aid kit. It's a little more than your average. I got Band-Aids and Aspirin first aid kit. But uh, to me, this is a good bushcrafter kit. It's got pretty much all of my basis covers for coming out and just bumming around in the woods, you know, doing my bushcraft stuff. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer everything I can. Once again, though, I am not a medical professional of any sort. All right, thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Kerry, and that's Cody, and we are Jawwood's Bushcraft. Thanks for watching.